On this Debaco University video, we're going to go an in-depth look at comparing types of fertilizer. Let's get into comparing types of fertilizer options uh, for growing plants. So first off, we, with fertilizer, we have what's called a guaranteed analysis. And all fertilizer labels have three distinctive numbers displayed, which is the guaranteed analysis. These numbers represent the primary nutrients and are presented in this consistent order. Here we see nitrogen followed by phosphorus, followed by potassium. And in this case, this fertilizer has no phosphorus, but is still listed as a number, in this case, zero. This allows nutrient ratios to be compared of any fertilizer. Specifically, the forms of each that the plant can uptake can be listed as well. First number is the amount of nitrogen. Second number is the amount of phosphate in the form of P2O5. And to get the actual amount of phosphorus, uh, it you take the P2O5 and multiply it by 0.044 to get the P. And the third number is potash. Um, K2O. To get the actual number of just uh, potassium, take K2O and multiply it by 0 0.83. However, because growers are typically looking at what's plant available, this is why they're presented in these forms. You'll also notice the guaranteed analysis down here lists water-soluble nitrogen with water-insoluble nitrogen. And that 4% of water-insoluble nitrogen is slowly available nitrogen and it's de derived in this example from biosolids. So what if there's a fourth number? What if you kind of see the three numbers and then there's a fourth number? Well, the fourth number may appear in some specialty fertilizers. This will usually represent either iron or sulfur, so be sure to check the label. In this case, we're looking at kind of this multi-nutrient blend here. These nutrients are supplemental and may be of value under special conditions, and this is why there's typically only those three numbers kind of listed um, there. Those specialty fertilizers, now we're looking at fertilizers can contain only one of three primary nutrients. In this example, we have nitrogen sources, such as ammonium nitrate, which is 35.5% nitrogen with no phosphorus or potassium, urea, uh, sodium nitrate, or liquid nitrogen as well. All these are very fit, much favoring the nitrogen with no phosphorus or potassium, which in certain cases might be beneficial. Then there's a phosphorus source, typically super triple phos, 0460, a very potent source of phosphorus. And then potash or potassium sources here, potassium chlorine, potassium sulfate, 60% and 50% um, potassium, respectively. I think it is some blending fertilizers, this Jack's Professional, a 20-20-20, an even blend of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So we get into those water soluble and insoluble forms uh, here. So labels will often state how much of the nitrogen is either water insoluble, uh, which is slowly released over a long period of time, typically several weeks, month, months, or even potentially years, as opposed to quickly available water soluble nitrogen. We see that listed right here. Typically, fertilizers will contain a combination of both forms, because if it all contained one, either be waiting a really long time, or it'll all be available uh, in a very short period of time. Quickly available water soluble forms uh, allows for quick results only days, about three days after application, you can see a, a change in the plants. Word of caution with the water soluble forms as these have higher odds of plant damage if applied to concentrated. In addition, the slower released forms often have a coating or other mechanisms to allow that slow release to occur. So often these forms have an additional expense associated with them. And again, here's just another example of a label. We're focusing on nitrogen, of course, but we see there's other nutrients as well. In this case, there's also other uh, non-plant food ingredients uh, in included, as well as some uh, bacteria. So again, there's a lot that can be gleaned for information from the label. Now this fertilizer ratio, again, things are still in the same nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium form. The ratio of fertilizers is the relationship between nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium content in those fertilizers. The ratio basics, a fertilizer with a 3-1-2 ratio, contains more than half the times as much nitrogen as it does potassium, and three times more nitrogen than phosphorus. So it kind of gives you that ratio there. Fertilizer example, fertilizer grades of 45, 15, 30 have a 3 to 1 to 2 ratio. These are important potentially for different stages of growth. 
The nutrient concentrations are pound for pound. A 361224 fertilizer contains twice as much nutrients as a six as an 8612 fertilizer. So keep that in mind as well when you're looking at your application rates. Here we see some grades and some ratios as some examples. And nitrogen is typically kind of meant to be for greening up the plant. Again, these are just general examples. Phosphorus, well, we think kind of down in the sense of the roots and blooms. And potassium presents kind of all around. So it's the up, down, all around nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium kind of lingo there just to get you an idea of what generally each can do. Now, how much is in the bag of fertilizer? So uh, the fertilizer ratios does not usually reflect the elemental nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, as I mentioned before. Only N in nitrogen is expressed as the elemental basis. P and K are expressed as the oxidized basic compounds because those are the plant available ones. This means that a fertilizer that reads 8, 18, 6, 12, as we see right here, 18, 6, 12, this contains 18% nitrogen, 6% uh, percent, uh, uh, phosphorus and 12% potassium as far as plant available concerns. So if you purchase a 100 pound bag of this, it would be 18 pounds nitrogen, 6 pounds and 12 pounds respectively. If you purchase a 20 pound bag, that would have 3.6 pounds nitrogen, 1.2 pounds phosphorus, 2.4 potassium. So you can see how those ratios play. And that's going to be important when you look at your application rates. So looking at solid fertilizer, we see here a granular form, if you will. Uh, it's, n it's known for good handling properties and allow even distribution because it's like little pebbles or rocks. This form does uh, not cake or form fine dust, which can make applications uh, challenging. So this makes it typically easier form to apply. Blended fertilizers we see down here as a result of a combination of single element or compound fertilizers to achieve a certain ratio or blend that's created to match the results of a soil test. Some fertilizer companies will make a blend if you give them soil test results. However, this can uh, cause there to be a size and color differences between the different types of fertilizer, which can sometimes lead to uneven applications. If one particle is really big and one particle is really small, that can lead to uneven applications. This fertilizer does help ensure that the resulting field is fertilized with nutrients that's needed in the ratios based on the soil test and reduces the potential for over application of one nutrient. So it's better than just applying one single nutrient. If you can get a custom blend, all the better. There's also liquid fertilizers, and there's clear solutions, which have nutrients that are completely dissolved in water to make handling very easy for the applicator. However, these are only available in relatively low concentrated nutrients. Then there is suspension fertilizers. These are basically nutrient suspensions in solution and have higher nutrient concentrations and can be used as a regular fluid. However, these types of fertilizers require repeated applications, both um, while in storage and even during applications. They need kind of that agitation so they don't usually uh, settle at the bottom because you want to ensure you're getting an even application of your fertilizer. Then there's also gaseous forms of fertilizer, used only in limited applications due to special handling and safety precautions that are needed. Anhydrous ammonia is a great nitrogen fertilizer and is a common gaseous form of fertilizer. However, to be effective, it must be injected into the soil. So, and hopefully that soil has limited rocks to prevent the gas from escaping. So when you put that, uh, injecting that nitrogen um, down below the soil surface, well, if there's a lot of rocks, those tips are basically going to get broken. So this is why you can only apply it in an area with limited rocks, because it wants to be covered up and sealed so it's kept in the root zone. Hazards involved in the handling of anhydrous ammonia include the kind of serious potential for chemical burns and asphyxiation as well. Um, so again, be cautious with this type of fertilizer. Then there's organic material considerations. So often these have variable properties, so each must be evaluated independently. Key properties to consider with any fertilizer, particularly organics, is solubility, meaning how well do the nutrients dissolve in water. Fish fertilizer, for example, can take a, be kind of hard or very low solubility, can be hard to get into solution. Then there's a the particle size. This can relate to simply the application method, but also the speed of avail availability to the plant, with smaller particles being quicker uh, to become plant available compared to larger particles. Sometimes you pay more for that finer grounding, but it will be more plant available faster. Then we want to consider also soluble salts, and this is pertains to organic as well as inorganic forms of fertilizer. High salts can cause damage to plants, but if fertilizer applications are evenly distributed and amounts follow the guidance of a soil test, the odds are low of plant damage. 
However, concentrated applications placed near germinating seeds can increase the odds of damage, especially if um, applied in a band or line. So here we see example of the seeds being planted here and here, and we're banding that fertilizer. We're putting it about five and a half inches uh, away from the plant's seeds. 11 inches is our row spacing, so those roots can kind of grow out to that fertilizer. This can happen with organic fertilizers such as manure in particular. Some people will broadcast their fertilizers. Some will subsoil band, meaning they put the seed here and they put the band of fertilizer below. Others will go kind of put the seed here and put the fertilizer over on this side. So those roots will grow out uh, and when they're more developed and ready to uptake those nutrients. This is called banding fertilizer. Typically with soluble salts, if you put it right next to the seed, it's gonna burn that seed or that tender root when it initially germinates. So when we're looking at that salt, we want to look at the consider the salt index. So you want to know the salt in the index of the fertilizer you're intending on using. You can see some have very low salt index, some have very high salt index. It doesn't mean that you need to stay away from the ones that have high salt. Just be aware uh, because that's going to maybe affect how you uh, apply it or how much you apply, apply it to limit the chance of plant damage. Lastly, we have fertilizer grades here. And this is when we're looking at purchasing fertilizer. Manufacturers produce different grades of many fertilizing for plants. We have the granular, which is often the largest for field applications due to typically the lowest cost due to the particle size will be the largest and technically the most variable. Generally, it's about uh, 22 millimeters, just to give you an idea. Then we have the mini granular, which is highly uniform, uh, medium-sized particles, about 14 millimeters. Greens grade is micro-sized particles, commonly used in greens and golf courses, very finely ground, about nine millimeters, and particle size, very consistent. Typically, you're gonna pay the most for the greens grade, even though it might be the exact same fertilizer that you can get in a granular form. And also, soluble quickly dissolves in liquid fertilizer solution. Basically, it's like a wettable powder, so you can then mix and go through and rapidly apply and be very quickly available to the plants. So while all these might be of the same fertilizer, the different grade of fertilizer can impact the cost, the method of application, and the availability to the plant. So hopefully you enjoyed this kind of very detailed look at fertilizer options, so you'd be well educated and make an informed decision to the benefit of you and your plants.